some turn in. It's great. I wish yeah. it was unnecessary. <laughs> New Year's Thanksgiving. <laughs> Where's Eileen? Hi, saw her. There's more chairs coming in, folks. Yes, I don't have Eileen yet. Eileen is here. Oh, she is? Yeah. Family. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you put the juice? Over. I don't think anybody bought lunch, but that's all right. Where did it move to? We're going to start soon. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Great. Okay, then we can stay. I'm from here on the Abolition 2000 New York Metro. We're working with Beyond Nuclear, who has been touring these wonderful visitors from Japan and you'll be hearing from them very shortly. Abolition 2000 is a global network that works for a treaty to eliminate nuclear weapons and for the total elimination of nuclear power. Because we knew from the beginning, when we formed in 1995, that every nuclear reactor is a bomb factory. And unfortunately now, we have to have this double tragedy in Japan, and hopefully out of this, we'll be able to, to organize ourselves and shut down nuclear power and eliminate nuclear weapons. In addition to the fact that our Abolition 2000 network drafted a model nuclear weapons treaty, which is now an official UN document which the Secretary General is talking about, in which the leader of our group, Peter Weiss, is here from the Lawyers Committee on Nuclear Power Policy, we also drafted a statute for an international renewable energy agency, and it's now a reality, IRENA, which is the Greek word for peace. So hopefully, if we can get rid of nuclear power, we'll have peace. And anybody tells you we can't do it, I recommend this report. A sustainable energy future is possible now with the angel of the wind blowing on a light bulb. It has 188 studies that show that we can absolutely live without nuclear, fossil, biofuels, and all the dirty, filthy industrial fuels that they're trying to put on us. My name is Linda Gunter. I'm the international specialist amongst many hats at Beyond Nuclear. I want to welcome you all today. There is, I think, one spare seat right here if somebody wants to sit down. Um, I apologize that it's standing room only. It's a wonderful problem to have, rare in our movement. It's privileged to have this delegation from Japan with us uh, for almost a week now. What struck me the most is that uh, it's almost probably unimaginable for us to picture ourselves in a situation where one day you wake up and you're told to, that you must evacuate your home possibly forever and that your life as you know it is basically over or that your husband who cannot find a job somewhere else is going to stay in this radioactively contaminated area saying goodbye to his wife and children for the indefinite future so that they can go somewhere and live safely or that you have dedicated your life to the land to farm naturally or organically and suddenly it is laced with radioactivity and you cannot in all conscience sell your product to anyone else and say that it is safe or clean or organic or that you have to trash your entire quota of honey because your bees wintered in Fukushima where it is sunny and came back and probably are contaminated with radioactivity. These are some of the stories that we've been hearing this week. It's it's very disturbing to us at Beyond Nuclear that we haven't been able to mobilize people to be angry who live around the reactors that are exactly the same as Fukushima here in the US. We've got 23 of them and my colleague Kevin Camps will tell you more about that. We are rallying today at 5 o'clock uh, partly because of children. You know, they're our future, they're next door as Elizabeth said. And these children have been asked to take doses that of radioactivity in Japan that are the same or higher than um, a, what a, re a nuclear power plant worker is expected to take in a year in Germany. So there's a human rights piece attached to this as well. I'm now going to introduce the panel. Um, I will just say briefly a couple of things about them. I think what they have to say speaks for themselves. Um, on my far right is Aileen Miyoko smith She is the executive director of Green Action and a long-time campaigner, created the petition that has gone to the UN Commission on Human Rights to plead for the evacuation of children out of harm's way around the Fukushima area. Next to her is Sachiko Sato, who is a natural farmer from Fukushima. 
Her children are here. Uh, we'll try to persuade them to come in in a minute and speak as well. They, they have some compelling stories to tell. They had to evacuate far away from their mother. She can no longer farm her organic farm, her natural farm, uh, because it's in bu a beautiful, pristine place once upon a time called Fukushima. Next to her is Kaori Izumi. She, is from, uh, she runs an organization, Shaktamari. Kaori is incredibly knowledgeable, but I discovered yesterday that she had no relationship with nuclear, knew nothing about it till March 11th of this year. And that was the moment that she realized what, what the risk was. And she's a forceful voice now to describe the, the collusion of the electricity companies, the government, the uh, bureaucrats, some certain scientists who have made a concerted effort in Japan to mislead and, and basically deny the risks to the public. Tomari is the first reactor to start up since Fukushima meltdown uh, and it's in Hokkaido where she's from. And finally Kevin, uh, we do have one other person who's running a little late, uh, uh, so Yukiko Anzai who is an organic farmer from Hokkaido. She's the one who has the bees so I'll let her describe that story when she's here. She'll, she'll be here shortly. And then finally, Kevin Camps, who's our radioactive waste watchdog at Beyond Nuclear. That's his title, but he does 150 other things as well, as those of you that know Kevin know well, uh, including escorting this wonderful delegation through DC and New York. And Kevin is going to talk to you a little bit about our campaign, which we started, which is called Freeze Off Kushmas, because we have these 23 Mark I GE boiling water reactors that are pretty much identical to the ones that melted down in Japan, in our country, still operating, the most famous of which is Vermont Yankee, who was given a license extension for 20 years, 10 days into the meltdowns in Japan. So that was the response of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Go ahead, have another 20 years, despite the dramatic pictures that were coming out of Japan. So he'll address that campaign. So thank you again for coming. I come from Fukushima. Fukushima is a beautiful land. Uh, I am an organic natural farmer. Uh, 30 years. Uh, I raised uh, five uh, children. To Chernobyl no ano jiko no ato ni watashi wa um to sekiu ga tomatte mo genpatsu ga tomatte mo ano ikirare ru yona seikatsu o shitai to motte seikatsu o shite kimashita. After the Chernobyl accident, can anybody hear me? Okay, that's okay. <coughs> After the Chernobyl accident, uh, I decided to learn from the time-tested skills and past. Well, after the Chernobyl accident, I decided that I needed to learn from the time-tested skills of the past and live a life that would not need any fossil fuels or nuclear power. So, I decided to learn from the time-tested skills of the past. 自然を大切にするという,う生き方です。Uh, that's a way of life that I believe、uh, treats people, we treat each other、uh, with care, and that we have awe and respect for nature. えっと私のところの農場はあの自然農と言って田畑を耕さないで、えー、お米や野菜やあ雑穀を作り、あ鶏をも飼って卵も作っていました。それでえっとご飯は薪で煮炊きをして、そういう本当に小さな農場で家族七人でささやかな暮らしをしてきました。We grew, we we practiced natural farming. This is a kind of farming where you don't even plow, and we grew rice and vegetables and mixed grains, and we cooked with firewood, and so our family. Uh, I practiced organic farming 30 years.、Uh, we, the seven of us,、uh, lived modestly this way. So, you could ask that all Manabitai to you, Hitotachiga, Zenko Kara, but I know no Johnny Kurioni Narimashita. And people who weren't wanted to learn this style of life、uh, came from all over Japan and uh, lived uh, near us and with us on our small organic farm. そういう人たちと、えー、本当に小さな共同体が周りにできていました。So they farmed with us, and in this way, a small kind of cooperative、uh, community had developed around us. それが3月11日を境にして一変してしまいました
But everything changed on March 11th. 地震、津波、原発事故、この三重苦の中、生きていかなければいけません。We had to live under the three tragedies of the earthquake, the tsunami, and the nuclear accident. とりわけ、放射能の影響は目に見えないだけに受け入れることが難しい問題です。And especially the nuclear accident, it's very difficult to live with it because you cannot see it. 私の周りにいた仲間たちも、大切にしてきた農地を捨てなければいけなくなりました。The farmers, the people that we were with,、um, they also had to discard to throw away、um, the farms that they had so dearly cared for. 農民が農地を捨てなければいけないこの辛さが皆さんにお分かりになるでしょうか。Can you understand the pain of farmers that have to abandon the land that they care for so much? 原発事故がまだ報道されない3月11日の夜中に私は福島に住む4人の子供たちを逃がそうと決めました。Late on the night of March 11th, even before we heard about the nuclear accident, there was a blackout. We didn't know. Uh, I was determined and decided to let my four children escape. Chernobyl の事故の後に万が一福島で原発事故があった時には山形に逃がそうと決めていたからです。This is because after the Chernobyl accident occurred, I had decided that if anything ever happened at Fukushima, I would evacuate my children up. North to Yamagata Prefecture. 3月13日の朝に山形の友人宅に私は子供たちを避難させることができました。On the morning of March 13th, I was able to have my children、uh, leave and go up to Yamagata to a friend's. 親として子供の命を守るという最低限の務めを終えることができて安心しました。I was able to fulfill the minimum duty of a parent, and that is to protect his or her own children. And so I was relieved. しかし、福島県内には30万人の子どもたちがいます。But even though my children escaped, there were 300,000 children that still remained in Fukushima. その福島の子どもたちを一人残らず,残らず、えー、助けたいと思いました。I wanted to save every single one of these children. So I started taking radiation measurements, aerial measurements of the Fukushima schools. その結果福島県内の 75% の学校が放射線管理区域の基準値を超えていました。As a result, it became clear that 75% of the schools in Fukushima had levels of radiation so high that they were radiation control areas or higher that triggered that. We submitted an advisory、uh, petition. To our local towns and also the prefecture saying, please evacuate the children immediately. If you want to decontaminate、uh, the soil, okay, but first evacuate the children. 震源書を提出した直後、4月19日に国は年間被爆量の基準値を子どもも含めて20ミリシーベルトと決めました。However, immediately after, On April 19th, the national government set a new provisional standard for radiation exposure for Fukushima citizens, including children, and that was 20 millisieverts a year, 20 times the normal standard. So, before it was 1 millisievert, and now it was increased to 20. Do you know 
Were they saying somehow that miraculously people's ability to withstand radiation had increased、uh, from before the accident? So, they were not saying that the people were not going to be able to do it. No, it was in order that the area that needed to be evacuated would be limited. Fukushima Shi and Koriyama Shi, Fukushima Ken, and Omo Nadashi, and the people who were not going to be able to do it. The reason was that they wanted to limit the area so that large cities in Fukushima, such as Fukushima City or Koriyama City, would not have to be evacuated. It's to reduce the amount of money that would be necessary for evacuation. This is a result of prioritizing money over the lives of children. 本当に去年と何も変わってない美しい福島の風景の中に確実に放射能は存在しています。The scenery in Fukushima remains absolutely the same as last year. It is beautiful, and yet, definitely, all over us, everywhere is radiation. そこに住めないと判断した人と I don't know. And a deep divide has developed between citizens who've decided that it's no longer safe to live in Fukushima and those that have chosen to remain. Everybody is in deep、uh, distress because they are trying to figure out、uh, what to do.、Um, what if we can't find jobs after we leave, if we leave Fukushima?、Uh, what's, what will we do with our mortgage that's 100,000 yen a month? Uh, what about our frail parents that we need to take care for in Fukushima?、Uh, what, is, it, is it right to completely uh, uh, sever all the relationships our children know and take them away? So, what has happened is that all of us are victims together, and yet we cannot accept each other's decisions. And this has rendered our hearts asunder. We are completely torn apart. The government has continually said there s no immediate health effects. しかしこの心がバラバラになるということが直ちに出た健康被害です。But the breaking apart of our hearts is the first health damage that has occurred. Is an immediate health damage. 福島県ではアドバイザーが県内くまなく100ミリ浴びても大丈夫だと講演して回りました。The Fukushima Radiation Health Risk Management Advisor went all over the prefecture, everywhere, and said that. Even 100 millisieverts of radiation exposure is no problem at all. The government did not release data. As a result, Uh, people were even evacuated to areas that had even, even higher levels of radiation than where their homes were. Data が公表されたのは1ヶ月も過ぎてからです。That data information was released only a month later. ほとんどの人たちは何の防御もなくそこに住み続けました。But、most people continue to live in the areas that they were placed、uh, without any, taking any precautions because they thought it was safe. 食,食品の基準値も500ベクレルと暫定基準を決めました。The safety food level, level for food was provisional level was 500 millisieverts a kilogram. 水は200ミリシーベルトです。The water is、uh, 200、uh, 
あベ,ベクレルリッターあたり200あベクレルズ per liter is the safety standard for food、uh, for water ウクライナやベラルーシの、えー、100倍の数値になります This is a hundred times the safety standard of Belarus or、uh, 10, uh, sorry, 10 times for food, 10 times the safety standard、uh, for Belarus or the U- Ukraine. The level of safety for water in the United States is 0.111 becquerels per liter. 200と、そうですね。停戦量起爆の被害はこれからじわじわと出てきます。Low level radiation exposure will continue and the effects will be, we will be seeing. リスクアドバイザーの山下氏も、100ミリ以下のデータはないと言っています。Yamashita, the health risk advisor of Fukushima, says that there is no information below 100 millisieverts exposure. 安全だと言いながらデータだけ集めてようとしています。He continues to say that it's safe and at the same time he's gathering data about it. 福島県民200万人モルモットにしようとしています。He's trying to make the two million people of Fukushima guinea pigs. そしてチェルノブイリで行った時のように福島県は被害はなかったと報告するでしょう。And probably he will do the same thing as in Chernobyl. Report that finally there were no health effects as a result of, for, to Fukushima citizens. もうすでに福島医大で国際会議が開催され福島の被害は少なかったと判断するのは住民たちだと言っています。判断するのは住民というのは、はい、あの避難するかどうか。うんうん uh, already uh, uh, it, in Fukushima Uh, the Fukushima Medical University has held an international conference that came out and said there's no problems in Fukushima and that if people want to uh, uh, deal with it, it's, it's up to them. We can't trust the prefecture or the government. Even though we say things are wrong,、uh, the mass media do not、uh, release the information accurately about what we say. The reason I came to the United States this trip is because I felt that the children of Fukushima can't be protected.、Um, Just by being in Japan. それは福島だけでなく日本だけでなくもうすでに世界中に被害が及ぶ,及ぶことが分かっているからです。This is because I know that this is not just about,、uh, what hap- about Fukushima or that the damage will be just in Japan, but that it will be international. 私たちは自分の子供たちを守りたいと最初に小さな子供が行っている保育園の除染をしました。When we, we want to protect the children, and the first thing we did was to decontaminate、uh, the、uh, daycare nurseries of small children. その時の様子を私たちが手伝って仲間が手伝って除染した時の様子を絵本に作りました。That was one of the first things we did after the accident. And,、uh, Uh, a colleague of ours who did it together、uh, made a, a picture book about that story. Yappeha, Kibo no Hikari to you, Daime desu. And it's called Yappeha,、uh, the, uh, the Light of Hope. Yappeha. Yappeha to you know, Hongen de, Mo Gamanga de Kinai kara, Jibun tachi de Yarushi kanai. So you imi desu. Yappeha means we can't stand anymore. We just have to do it on our own. This is a time when the government,、uh, prefecture, national government refuses to decontaminate anything. And that's why we went ahead and decontaminated. 
除染した土を葬りました And the, the earth that we gathered that was contaminated we told the earth we're sorry that human beings uh, uh, contaminated it and、uh, we, we prayed and, 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 and put it、uh, aside この除染した保,保育園は除染しても子どもがいられる場所ではないと判断してまた別なところに移転することを決めました。Soil, um, was, was so、それだけ汚染は深刻なんです。アメリカに来てからワシントンで政府の方たちとお会いしました。When we came to the US, we met with government officials. 福島の現状を市民の口からお伝えするためです。And this was earlier this week, and we came here so that they could hear the direct voice of citizens of Fukushima. アメリカの政府は日本の福島の出来事を学びますと言ってくれました。Uh, the U.S. government officials said that they will learn from the lessons of Fukushima. どこから学ぶんですかと聞いたら。I asked, what will you learn from Fukushima? <笑>政府からだし。They said, we'll learn from the Japanese government. 私たちが信用してないから政府から学べることはありません。But、uh, we cannot,、uh, we 信用してないからっていうのは私,私,私がね。Uh, I said, you cannot learn from the government. Japanese government. They are not to be trusted. アメリカの政府が学ぶことは事故の時に80キロ逃がすことその手段を学ぶことだと言いました。I told them that the lessons to be learned from Fukushima is that you declared uh, uh, a, a no go zone for up to 50, 50 miles and that that's what you have to learn from Fukushima. 事故が起こることを前提としてみます、アメリカは。The US government talks as though、uh, it, it, the, an accident, accidents will happen. ニューヨークから80キロ以内に原発はないのですか ?So we said, are there no nuclear power plants、uh, within 50 miles of any place uh, 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 of where people live in the United States? あるとすれば、ニューヨークは避難しなければいけない場所になります。If there were, a place like New York City is a place that has to be evacuated. But that's not the lesson we want them to learn about Fukushima. If you really want to learn the lessons of Fukushima, learn that there are absolutely no safe nuclear power plants anywhere. それが福島の子どもたちが今まで半年間受けてきた悲しみや苦しみを救うことの希望の光になるんです。この希望の光はそういうことなんです。ぜひこの意味を伝えてください。And learning that lesson is the light of hope for the children who have been suffering and having pain、uh, these last six months ever since the accident of Fukushima. 私たちは5月の1日に本当に子どもを心配するお父さんやお母さんやおじいちゃんやおばあちゃんでネットワークを立ち上げました。That is the lesson to be learned from Fukushima. And during the last six months, we have established a network. These are mothers, fathers, grandparents,、uh, citizens who are concerned about the safety of the Fukushima children. 本当に7代先までの子どもたちの命のことを考えたら、今やらなければならないことはおのずとわかるはずです。If you thought about the safety of children for the next seven, seven generations, then naturally you know what are the things that have to be done. I think the most important is that we leave our uh, 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 political differences aside. Or we leave the differences of we're in different governments、uh, or different race, and that we really think about what has to be done. What is the most important 
thing for human beings to continue living? お金ですか Is it money? ものですか it, are they, Is it things? 違います No, it's not. きれいな空気や水や食べ物、大地です。It is beautiful air, the earth,、uh, the land. それを未来の子供たちに残さなければ、私たち21世紀の大人たちは、And the water. 未来の子供たちの命よりもお金が大事だったと、人類が滅びるまで言い伝えなければなりません。And unless we do this and say into the 21st century and say that this is what's important for the children, then the message that we, are, we will be sending out is that money is more important and that we will just continue to destroy ourselves for generations. ぜひ全世界中の子どもたちの命を守るために皆さんでつながっていきましょう。Uh, let us all join together in order to protect、uh, the children of everywhere in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Mina Sato. She is Sachiko san's 13 year old daughter. And she's going to make a brief statement followed by her brother, Yuko, who's 17. 中学生になって新しくできた友達と離れ離れにあったことが一番悲しいです。Um, being separated from the new friends I had made in junior high school was the saddest thing for me. 小学生の同級生は住人だけで、女子は私一人でした。In elementary school, I had only 10 classmates and I was the only girl. When I entered junior high school for the first time ever, I had、uh, friends, girls that were friends. しし But because we moved to Yamagata, I had no friends again. And I felt if only these nuclear power plants didn't exist,、uh, things wouldn't have turned out this way. My father built our house 20 years ago. Uh, I didn't have my own room, and the house was being renovated from February, and my room was being built. ままま But I had to leave my home before the room was completed. I was looking so forward to my own room, and so I feel really disappointed. Thank you very much. 僕は自分の家の農場で鶏の,の世話をする仕事とお母さんの経営する事務所でヘルパーとして働いていました。Uh, farm, しかし3月13日から山形に避難し、妹と2人で自炊をしました。And I co- we cooked and lived, the, my sister, younger sister, and I cooked and lived,、uh, the two of us together. At the end of March, the daycare center where I had been working was found to be very contaminated with levels、uh, uh, as high as five microsieverts an hour. And even in April, it was still two microsieverts an hour. お母さんは 0.6 マイクロシーベルトパワー以上の放射線管理区域で18歳未満は働いてはいけない。当分の間、福島には戻れないと確保しなさいと言いました。My, my mother told me that people 18 years or under are legally not allowed to be in areas that are over 0.6 microsieverts an hour. And so she told me, brace yourself against the fact you won't be able to return to Fukushima for quite some time. 
国は農場の仕事もヘルパーの仕事もできなくなりました。I cannot work on my farm anymore and I cannot work as a helper at the daycare center anymore. 福島には友達がいました。山形から福島まで車で2時間半かかります。I had friends in Fukushima, but it takes two and a half hours to go from Yamagata to Fukushima. 僕はまだ車の免許もないし、駅まで15キロもあるところだったので、自分で福島に行くことはできず、避難してから7月まで友達に会いませんでした。But I have no car. And there was no way I could get 15 kilometers to, it was difficult to go to the train station. And therefore, I wasn't able to see my friends until July. That was really painful for me. At the end of July, we moved in Yamagata to a place that was closer to the train station so I could make my way to Fukushima, and I felt better. After the nuclear power plant accident, I looked into nuclear power and I found out that the plants were not、uh, built to sustain earthquakes and tsunamis. I also learned that it was untrue that there wasn't enough electricity capability. So, why aren't we being told the truth? And I felt really sad that、uh, protecting nuclear power plants took a precedent over protecting our lives. Thank you very much. Yoichi is a small town in Hokkaido, just 30 kilometers from Tomari nuclear plant. I live with my husband and children, farming organic vegetables and breeding hens and bees without any agricultural chemicals or herbicides so that we could keep health and rich land. Fukushima's accident could occur at any place. While nuclear plant exists. But now I have been regretting that I never thought the world would become like this. And since the accident in Fukushima nuclear plant, we stopped using the word safe for our vegetables because the radiation could be found at any time, anywhere. I do not do want to ignore the fact. Like the Japanese government does, and keep farming like nothing ever happened. Now, the power company of Hokkaido is trying to keep all the reactors at the Tomari nuclear plant, power plant running. Also, they are a threat to our rich land, to our life, and to the future of our children. We do not need the electricity from the nuclear plant anymore. Life and food are more necessary to us than electricity and economic wealth. We have to, the, we have to get rid of the threat for our, our life. It is too late to realize this after we lost everything. Fathers and mothers of America, please give us the power and help us. Together, let's stop the world being polluted. And the only answer how to do so is to stop the nuclear plants. Fukushima 原発事故以来630キロメーター離れた北海道に住む私たちの暮らしですら大きく変わりました。After the Fukushima accident, the, our lives, this is in Hokkaido, 630 kilometers away, even our lives were changed hugely. 越冬のため、福島近くに置いていた蜂を、私の夫は今年の蜂蜜は一切取らないと廃業することに決めました。The bees that we keep,、uh, we make honey,、uh, the bees that we keep near Fukushima、uh, during the winter time,、uh, uh, the, our, my husband said this year、uh, we have to throw away all the honey that we have made because of that. 蜂に放射能のどんな影響が出ているかわからないからです
This is because we don't know what kind of effects the radiation might have had on our bees. 今後一番の心配は、ニワトリたちの餌の原料となるフィッシュミールです。From now on, our biggest concern is the fish meal that is、uh, the feed for our hens. 海で取れる魚にはきっと放射能の影響がかなり出ることでしょう。Probably there will be radiation effects、uh, on the fish of the ocean. 私はそうなったら農業を続けることはできないと思っています。I feel that if that happens, then we won't be able to continue farming, continue agriculture. We started farming because we thought that this would, could be one happiness for people,、uh, also a source of health for people around us. But now, because of this,、um, it, we, can't, we can't continue. Thank you. We decided to come to New York、um, for today on the 22nd of September. There is a high level、uh, meeting on、uh, nuclear power safety, is ongoing at the、uh, UN headquarters. I assume that our Prime Minister Noda、uh, made uh, his uh, uh, speech,、um, and I assume what he said was we are managing Fukushima, it's under control. And we are going to、uh, do our best to、uh, create safer nuclear power. I, we came here to tell you that safe nuclear power doesn't exist. <laughs> Fukushima disaster is ongoing. It's not ended. The investigation is ongoing. The cause is not analyzed properly. And more. Most experts say now that it's not tsunami. It's most likely before tsunami, it was damaged by earthquake. And、uh, no new safety measure is in place. 11 new power, nuclear power、uh, plants in Japan, which are currently under operation out of、uh, total 54, they are operating based on an old safety measures which caused. Fukushima disaster.、Uh, NISA, Nuclear Industrial Safety Agency, is the one who gave green sign to Fukushima Daiichi that it's safe for the, the plant to be operated. And then it happens 3 11. NISA is the very organization which is responsible for. The disaster. Who gave green sign to our Tomari Unit 3 on the 17th of August? To me, this is like a thief is an watchman of its own. So, what does it mean? It means that、uh, another Fukushima can happen anytime. Meti and Hokkaido Electric, I mean the Ministry of uh, Industry, uh, tra uh, Economy, Trade, Industry, Meti, and、uh, Hokkaido Electric, they couldn't take any risk that、uh, no nuclear power plant will be resumed because of Fukushima. So it was a must for them that one of the plants should be. Restarted as soon as possible. And then they targeted Tomari 3. Why? Because it was a soft target. Because our governor, Harumi Takahashi, is a pro nuclear、uh, former bureaucrat from the METI. She was, in fact, sent to Hokkaido to promote、uh, MOX fuel. So what she did, she bypassed Hokkaido legislature. She didn't consult us, Hokkaido residents, at all. She didn't even consult with the resident in Tomari. We did everything to stop it, including sitting in front of the governor's office. 
but on the 17th August, she made a press conference like this one here, that we received a agreement from the local uh, communities. The safety of uh, Tomari 3 is guaranteed by NISA. So we go ahead. And after, immediately after, Tomari 3 became the first one to be resumed after Fukushima in the world. So many scandals exposed around Hokkaido Electric, the governor. One is money issue. The second is a, a rigging of a yes uh, opinions for MOX and the uh, construction of Tomari 3. And the third one is a revolving door. We set up our own citizens investigation committee to uh, find out on all these issues. And we found out that the board members of Hokkaido Electric were faithful donors for the governor's political fund management organization, Hoshunkai. And the uh, former president of Hokkaido Electric, Mr. Minamiyama, is a, a current president of governor's political fund management organization. And then we also found out that uh, there are several bureaucrats from Hokkaido government were re employed by Hokkaido Electric. Recently, on the 1st of April, just three weeks after Fukushima happened, a uh, former chief of nuclear safety division of Hokkaido government was rehired by Hokkaido Electric. Then rigging, more and more cases uh, exposed, disclosed, that they did everything to get major uh, op uh, yes opinions to go ahead with uh, mox fuel. And also construction Tomari 3, 1999, Hokkaido Electric. Their aim was to uh, gather electric companies, the government, um, have pursued, despite, I mean, nuclear power, against our people's will. And this is the case all over in Japan. So, as you see now, nuclear power has been a national project based on a cozy relationship between the government uh, the electric companies, business cycles, media, academia, and even the judiciary. We have a judge who was rehired by electric companies. And in July, the government passed a law to uh, help out Tokyo Electric from bankruptcy, while uh, the people in Fukushima, the victims of, of uh, the, this disaster, including Mrs. Sato and her family, there's no such measures taken. They have to organize their own evacuation. There is no guarantee for their future lives. Do you call this democracy? What we are facing now is this democracy issue. And that's what we are fighting for now, which was exposed only because Fukushima ha happened. We invited uh, Mrs. Sato to Sapporo, to Hokkaido for a, uh, a, a talk. It was in May or June. At the end of her speech, I remember very well what she said. She said, Fukushima, an island of happiness, an island of beauty, 
the only way Fukushima could become happy island is that if the people in Japan and in the world could learn from Fukushima and put an end to nuclear. <laughs> and when the people in Fukushima are appreciated for putting an end to nuclear power, that's the time when Fukushima people, they, they, there'll be some meaning on their immense suffering. We fail to learn from Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Three Mile Island, Chernobyl. Can we afford failing to learn from Fukushima again? We are here to appeal today to the world. We need to learn from Fukushima. We need to put an end to the age of nuclear power. Otherwise, it will happen. It might be Tomari, where we live. It could be Indian Point, where you live. It could be anywhere in the world at any time. Thank you. I mean, people are courteous, and of course, the people are very nice. But our government, uh, uh, I know a journalist that's very experienced in Japan, a foreign journalist, said this is uh, kitty fascism. You know, kitty is that cute uh, cat. It's very popular. It's cute and it's, you know, nice colors and everything. And he called the place after being in Japan. He said, this is kitty fascism. So there's one face, but the reality is different. Uh, and actually, Japan has a very bad human rights record. And what's been happening since March 11th is the real face of Japan, Japanese government, unfortunately. Uh, it's worthy to note uh, that, and I realize now that I had a lot of prejudice because I thought that it, when Chernobyl happened in the Soviet Union, um, I, had, uh, I, I had a certain view about that and I thought that Japan would be different. Actually, the situation is that Japan is worse. Uh, 20 millisievert standard is what triggers the radiation evacuation. In other words, if you are facing contamination that's under that, the government will not help you one penny, one cent yen. In Chernobyl, it was mandatory evacuation at five millisieverts a year. That's one quarter of the, of the contamination. Uh, people had the right to evacuate. In other words, we're guaranteed help for relocation between one and five millisieverts exposure. In Fukushima, people are trapped. Of course, there is no legal papers you have to sign in order to leave the pre pre prefecture, but how do you leave when you are being taxed for the same property taxes as before the accident? You are having to pay the mortgage, you're having to do everything like that, there's no job assurance, and you don't know what to do. And as uh, Sachiko explained and Linda when she introduced explained that is the current situation and families are being torn apart. Cannot tell you how many families where the the mother and children have left and the father is remaining in Fukushima and they meet once a month. That is all over the place. Okay. Uh, all throughout this situation it's citizens that have always driven the step forward. Uh, Sachiko and her friends were the very first to monitor radiation levels in the prefecture. Prefecture hadn't done that. The government hadn't done that. They are the ones that found how extensive it was immediately after the accident. And that drove forward the monitoring program by the prefecture and the government. Then they refused to decontaminate it. The citizens started to decontaminate and push the thing forward. Grandparents decontaminated the schoolyards and they made it as clean as it was before and yet because the whole environment is contaminated it goes right back. But that drove then the f government to finally start to decontaminate but then they said we will decontaminate but we won't evacuate. So now people are trapped. They were promised decontamination but in the meantime nothing has changed. They're living in contamination. Um, you hear stories that are just in incredibly painful. Um, 
do I have a couple more minutes? Or, 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 yeah, one story that a school teacher told me, and we agreed I couldn't even tell people which town she lived in for fear of her losing her job. She said that she talked about radiation to her students once, and she was hauled in to the principal's office and said, if you want your job, never, never, ever talk about radiation. You're not going to have a job if you do that. And she witnessed in her uh, faculty room an individual, a teacher, who wanted to self-evacuate his family for a few weeks. And he saw, she, this person saw in front of her teachers yelling at this person saying, you traitor, you are betraying us, you are a horrible, horrible person. And that person left the room with people yelling at him and after he left, they were kicking his desk, and when he returned, he is completely ostracized. This is what it's doing to people, but if you see the manuals that the government brings in about radiation and what you are supposed to do at the schools, and this is what you're supposed to do, this is what has happened to people, individuals who were friends before. It's just horrible. Um, I want to turn to the, the, the general picture of Japanese nuclear power. As, as Kaori mentions, there are only 11 nuclear power plants operating now in a country that has 54. We would have never thought about that this could happen. We are physically phasing out of nuclear power. If it, we can continue to keep the ones that are shut, shut, and then each of these 11 will keep getting shut because of the annual outage. And by March, we will be completely operating with no nuclear power in Japan if we can keep the government from restarting the plants. So the, the fight or the, the, the issue is very clear laid out in front of us. Should these re plants restart or not? And they shouldn't. And that is what we're going to try to do is to keep the ones that are shut, shut. Um, and uh, the reason we have come here is that we submitted a petition Okay, it's the human rights of the Fukushima children. And in, on August 17th, uh, her organization, she's a board member, that's the Fukushima Network for Protecting Children from Radiation. Uh, my organization, Green Action, and four others um, that, that have been meeting over and over and over with the government uh, about these issues. Uh, we submitted a petition to the UN Office of the High Commissioner uh, for Human Rights. And we stated, please, come to Japan and investigate the real situation and do something about it because the children are trapped. And the reason we came here is so that we make this publicly known internationally as the meetings, high level meetings are happening at the UN. Uh, we met with the, the, the NRC uh, commissioners, a couple of them uh, uh, on Tuesday and uh, as was mentioned before, they say they want to learn the lessons from Fukushima. Very recently, a report was issued by the Japanese government this September, this month, uh, to the IAEA about the current situation. This does not depict at all what is happening in Japan now. And so if they are saying they're going to learn from this, it is not truth at all. It just doesn't portray the plight of the citizens of Fukushima and Japan and it does not portray what should be done and what is actually ongoing. And so we want the word to get out about what is really happening in Japan and that is why we're here. Um, thank you very much. As Linda introduced me, I do the radioactive waste work at Beyond Nuclear and I've been asked to talk about our Freeze Our Fukushima's campaign that Beyond Nuclear launched in early to mid-April. This is an emergency enforcement petition to the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the agency which is supposed to protect public health and safety, the environment in the United States. But as my friends and colleagues from Japan have said about Japan, much the same, almost exactly the same can be said here in the United States. This agency is a rogue agency. It's very complicit with the industry it's supposed to regulate. And so we go in with our eyes open about this emergency enforcement petition. In fact, in the uh, decades long existence of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, there have been many such petitions brought by anti-nuclear and environmental groups, concerned citizens about the risks at their nuclear power plants 
all of which have died on the grapevine because the Nuclear Regulatory Commission rejects them again and again. There has been very rarely any positive progress due to these petitions that take so much work. But we launched this petition in the aftermath of Fukushima to call attention to the 23 atomic reactors in the United States that are of the exact same design. General Electric boiling water reactors of the Mark I design. Some of the most controversial, Linda mentioned Vermont Yankee, and the scandal that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and I believe it was on the Three Mile Island meltdown anniversary actually, that the NRC um, as an agency would approve 20 more years at this 40 year old atomic reactor which is massively leaking radioactivity into the groundwater and the soil and eventually the Connecticut River from underground pipes that the company's executives t told the state of Vermont under oath did not exist. So um, that's one of these reactors. Uh, other famous ones or infamous ones I should say would be Oyster Creek in New Jersey, the oldest operating reactor in the United States, now 42 years old which one week or less after the NRC granted it another 20 years, announced to the world that it was having a large-scale tritium release, radioactive hydrogen, into the groundwater, into the aquifer below, into Oyster Creek, which flows into Barnegat Bay, a uh, very productive, uh, biologically diverse body of water, which happens to be very shallow and very small. And here's an incredible fact about Barnegat Bay and Oyster Creek atomic reactor. Every six weeks, because Oyster Creek saved money when it was built 42 years ago and did not build a cooling tower, every six weeks, the entirety of Barnegat Bay is sucked through the Oyster Creek atomic reactor for cooling water purposes, killing unimaginable amounts of sea life in microscopic form, the early life stages of fish and other aquatic life but also killing uh, megafauna, uh, fish themselves that are sucked into the plant through this massive um, flow of water. To give you an idea how big it is, it's about a square mile, well, it's a smaller reactor. It's, it's pushing a square mile of Barnegat Bay to a depth of 10 feet or more on a daily basis. That's what gets uh, sucked through the plant. That's another one that is uh, identical twin to Fukushima Daiichi. Yet another, the largest um, GE BWR Mark I in the world is Fermi II in Michigan. Uh, as with Oyster Creek, as with Vermont Yankee, Fermi II, because it has operated for decades and does not, uh, at Fermi II, yet have dry cask storage, outdoor storage in silos, which has its own problems for high level radioactive waste. At each of these plants I just mentioned, over 500 tons of high-level radioactive waste in the storage pool at Fermi 2, which is more than the waste in units 1, 2, 3, and 4 at Fukushima Daiichi combined in the high-level radioactive waste storage pools. So there's a few examples of these plants. Another one I could mention, because it's not so far from here, is Millstone Unit 1 in Connecticut, which has been shut down since the mid-1990s because of major safety problems they were having, including with the high-level radioactive waste storage pools at that plant, which led to uh, criminal charges and actually convictions at, at Millstone. Thanks to a whistleblower, the world found out about this in the first place, who was made to pay a very heavy price for his whistleblowing. Millstone Unit 1 has been shut down since the mid-1990s, and its pool remains full with all the waste that that plant ever generated. All this time later, why? because the company doesn't want to spend the money, some tens of millions of dollars at most, which they make that kind of money in days or weeks in profits from electricity sales at these facilities. That waste has stayed in the pool at risk of a catastrophic accident all this time just to save that relatively small amount of money for this company. So those are some examples. Uh, the emergency enforcement petition calls attention to the reactor risks, the containment risks with these facilities, as well as the high-level radioactive waste storage risks. We had our um, initial meeting with the Petition Review Board in early June. This is an NRC body. And we um, broke a record for public interest. We had, at that point, already many hundreds of co-petitioners, many of whom phoned in to the meeting. And by doing so, by flooding the phone lines that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission prevented the NRC regional offices 
which are the local headquarters of the NRC for each region of the country, from calling in. They called in too late. The public had already called in and flooded the phone lines. So the agency had to call a suspension to the proceeding that day to allow time enough to get more phone lines freed up so that the regional offices could, could phone in. The NRC didn't care that the public couldn't get in. They had to have their regional offices there for legal purposes. That's the only reason they did that. So we're about to have our second meeting of the Petition Review Board on October 7th at 10 in the morning. You could still sign up as a co-petitioner at our website, which is uh, right there, beyondnuclear.org, on our homepage. You can sign up as an official co-petitioner. We now have over 5,000 co-petitioners, both individuals and organizations, signed on. We'll have, as we did um, in June, we'll have a number of the grassroots groups that live in the shadows of these facilities speaking um, on the record, the official record, to these NRC decision makers explaining the reactor risks, uh, the high-level radioactive waste storage risks. And I'll just uh, close by, by saying that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has established a task force for learning the lessons from Fukushima. It issued its near-term report in the middle of July. And incredibly, a majority of the NRC Commission, the five directors of the agency, uh, by a three to two vote, voted to take their sweet time in implementing even the recommendations of their own task force, which called for a whole spectrum of safety regulation upgrades at nuclear power plants. And we actually had some agreement from our emergency enforcement petition and the task force. They said that there need to be safety upgrades on high-level radioactive waste storage pools. They said there needs to be a makeup water supply, so if the water boils away from the heat of the waste in an accident, it can be replaced. We would say that's just the most basic of things. Uh, you also need emergency power supplies on the pool to prevent the boiling in the first place. They didn't call for that, but we're calling for that. Uh, we have also called for gauges to be added to the pools. It's incredible that the regulations don't require temperature gauges on the pools. They don't know the temperature of the pool water. Uh, water level gauges, they don't know if there's water leaking or boiling away from the pools, not required under regulations. So we've called for all these things. Um, on the containment, which was dramatically destroyed at Fukushima Daiichi on live television, NHK broadcasting, tele televising live the large-scale hydrogen explosions, first at Unit 1. The Unit 2 explosion happened within the primary containment structure. So the external building looks more intact, but the primary containment structure was severely damaged in the first days, creating pathways for the melted down cores of Unit 2 to uh, escape into the external environment, actually. Uh, Unit 3's explosion was the most dramatic of all, a uh, very large-scale hydrogen explosion. If you see images from recently, flyovers by drones, because it's such high radiation fields that human pilots would receive a, a dangerous radiation dose from flying over. It's a pile of rubble at Unit 3. That's all that's left. Um, what condition the reactor pressure vessel is in, what condition the pool is in, is anybody's guess. Unfortunately, Tokyo Electric Power Com Company controls most of the flow of information. Uh, Unit 4 suffered an explosion that to this day remains a mystery. Nobody knows, uh, officially or unofficially, why Unit 4 exploded. Unit 4 was not an operating reactor. Its fuel had been removed from the core before this disaster struck into the pool. In the early days of this catastrophe from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the belief was that the pool at Unit 4, containing the most waste of all, had boiled, the waste had caught on fire, and the hydrogen gas gener generated had exploded and causing damage to the, primary, th to the secondary containment building. But now they have backpedaled. Even as early as May, they were backpedaling because images released by Tokyo Electric showed that the pool was largely intact. The fuel was largely intact. There was some debris from the explosion in the pool. But the new theory is that Unit 3 caused Unit 4's explosion. The two units share a venting system um, that shares a smokestack, so to speak, that the hydrogen gas was supposed to be released to the atmosphere through. Well, that sure didn't work at uh, Unit 3. And apparently, the hydrogen gas generated at Unit 3 flowed through this common system into Unit 4 and exploded. That's the theory, anyway. And so incredibly, not only the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has declared the storage of high-level radioactive waste in pools, and dry casks for that matter, to be safe and secure, 
not just presently, but for 120 years, perhaps 300 years on site. An incredible, absurd statement that they call the nuclear waste confidence decision. Everything's fine, we're confident. Um, in addition, the US uh, Blue Ribbon Commission on America's Nuclear Future, in charge of dealing with the high-level radioactive waste mountain that's 70 years high in this country, uh, they have said the same thing in late July. There are no problems with the safety or security of pool storage or dry cast storage in the United States. Well, the dramatic uh, television footage of helicopters in Japan desperately trying to drop water into these pools that were boiling dry. Uh, fire trucks from far away regions of Japan trying to um, pour water from a distance into the pools because the radioactivity levels were so high the firefighters could not approach without receiving dangerous doses of radiation. Ironically, crowd control riot, uh, riot control water cannons being used to fire water from a distance and other ad hoc means. Obviously, there are safety problems with high level radioactive waste storage in pools and we have them here in the United States. We could have a Fukushima-like accident any day at any of these 23 GE BWR Mark Ones, but we are not um, saying that the Mark IIs and the Mark Threes and the pressurized water reactors are safe. That's not what we're saying at all. We're beginning our campaign focused on identical twins to Fukushima Daiichi. After that, we will move to close the Mark IIs, which are very similar in design, the Mark Threes, which are very similar in design, then move on to the pressurized water reactors like Indian Point. I went at Eileen Miyoko Smith's invitation to Japan in August of 2010, and my first stop on the speaking tour was Fukushima Daiichi. And I met beautiful people. I met um, the mayors of those towns. And um, as was said by Mrs. Sato, it's a very beautiful place except for these nuclear plants that are marring the landscape even then. Um, one little known fact about Fukushima Daini, seven miles to the south of Fukushima Daiichi, is that it survived this catastrophe by a single off-site power line, four operating reactors, that uh, the tsunami hit, wiped out the emergency diesel generators. Because of a single off-site power line that survived the earthquake, this, react this reactor catastrophe was not twice as nightmarish as it currently is. And, um, that whole place that I visited that was so beautiful, the beautiful people, is now a dead zone that will probably, probably be uninhabitable forever, just like at Chernobyl. And all of these reactors in the United States and Canada, which has the CANDUs, Canadian Natural Uranium Deuterium Reactors, also very dangerous reactor designs, need to be shut down. 104 operating reactors in the United States, another two dozen in Canada, North America needs to be a nuclear free zone. That, as was said, is the lesson from Fukushima. Thank you. We're going to open it now to questions from the audience. I have three announcements, quick announcements to make before. And I am going to those of you who go first to ask questions. The NRC has had a number of documents on file that show that there were design flaws in this reactor, that, re that this kind of an accident was predicted to happen. What is the role? Has there been discussion? And what should be happening here about the corporate role of General Electric and its complicity with the NRC? Um, <clears throat> I think that that's a really good question. Um, uh, Right now, the, the immediate issues of what Fukushima Prefecture is doing, what the national government is doing, and what Tokyo Electric is doing. And also, uh, uh, you know, Tokyo Electric needs to be charged on criminal charges. Away with everything. As, you, as was mentioned, uh, there was a law, national law created uh, uh, last month to, complete, to bail out and to prevent uh, bankruptcy for Tokyo Electric. Just subsidies can just keep flowing in to Tokyo Electric. And, uh, and yet, uh, you know, if people demonstrate, uh, they're thrown in jail, they've been arrested, they're thrown in jail. So we're facing those kind of situations uh, with lots of, of, of accountability to be had in Japan itself uh, because it's the, um, you know, there, there may be a couple hundred people in Japan, uh, top government leaders, top advisors, academics, um, the electric utility, and, you know, judges and everybody that should be criminally charged. 
And so um, I don't think there's been that much done on about GE. Uh, so I think okay. I'm going to give you say, to Kevin I'll just say um, real because quickly. it has yeah. been issue, it raised the issue of, of course, of GE. Yeah, well, as you said, it's been known since 1972 that the containment structure, especially on the GE Mark I, is too small. It's too weak. They saved a lot of money by making it that way. Uh, 1972, Stephen Hanauer, a top safety official at the Atomic Energy Commission, wrote an internal memo that said we need to stop licensing these plants. And they uh, disregarded that. They continued licensing the ones that were already underway and building them, and they even licensed ones that hadn't even been uh, proposed yet when he wrote that memo. 1986, the warning was reissued by Harold Denton, a top Nuclear Regulatory Commission safety official, who in at an industry conference said there's a 90% uh, predicted failure rate on the Mark I containment in an accident. This has been known for a long time. I'll just say uh, Jeffrey Immelt, the uh, CEO of General Electric was sent by President Obama to Japan in the aftermath of Fukushima to help out somehow and largely hid out while he was there. According to media reports from Japanese media, he would not meet with government officials, he would not meet with Tokyo Electric officials, he would not meet with the public, and when finally some reporters were able to ask him questions, he would not answer the questions, apparently fearing that he might be served liability papers for this so-called defective product of General Electric. And I'll just say that um, this product was defective when it was built and brand new. And now that these plants are 40 years old, it is all the more risky because now you have age-related degradation. Oyster Creek is 42 years old. Vermont Yankee is 39 years old. These are very old plants. Something that's not realized is that Fukushima Daiichi Unit 1 had only just received a license extension. So there's the very real possibility that that unit could have been shut down and unloaded of its fuel into the pool and we would not have had a meltdown at Unit 1 reactor. That's another lesson from Fukushima Daiichi. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission has rubber stamped 75 license extensions at reactors in the United States for an additional 20 years, including many Mark 1s. And we're really living on borrowed time. We're playing with fire with these very dangerous reactors.